Hello, my name is John Glebe. My final project is the classification of marine mammals from acoustic samples using a neural network. Bioacoustic monitoring is used by wildlife biologists, conservationists, and climate change scientists to identify, count, and locate various animal species. For larger marine mammals, such as whales, dolphins, seals, underwater acoustic monitoring using hydrophones has been used to study their locations and communicative behavior, uh, sometimes over vast differences. The objective of this project is to classify six species of baleen whales using a neural network approach implemented in Python and TensorFlow. The, the audio data for this project were downloaded from a site called mobisound.org. This is a repository run by Oregon State University that has been set up specifically to facilitate research in automatic call recognition. The data includes waveform files, some of which are quite lengthy, as well as annotations that identify species start and stop times where the calls exist on the files, which of course is essential to being able to classify them. The major work products of this include splitwave.py, a utility program used to extract samples for classification modeling, and an IPython notebook, which is the implementation of the neural network model. And I will discuss each of these in more detail. <clears throat> Here is a link to the mobisound.org website. As you can see, they don't just specialize in uh, mysticetes, the baleen whales, they also have odontocetes, tooth whales, pinniped seals, and so on, and they sponsor workshops. Uh, this is organized by uh, species, and so as you can see there are a variety of uh, baleen whale species listed on this particular page, and the sizes of the files zipped are quite large. Um, of these we chose a subset for, for this based on pretty much the having a large enough sample of files, but also how well they were annotated. And here you see the six species that we chose, blue whale, bowhead whale, bride's whale, finback whale, humpback whale, and minke whale. When I download these, I put them into a file, a folder called MobiSound, and the subfolders you see are exactly what comes out of the zip files and there's no other changes to the files inside them. Uh, but just these six constitute 153 megabytes of, of data. So there are a number of challenges in working with this data. One is that the quality of the, of the audio re recordings is, is rather poor, but that's by design. It's supposed to be realistic because you're trying to train uh, things like neural network models and how to recognize calls under perhaps adverse conditions. And so we need to transform these data um, in order. And the researchers affiliated with MobiSound have provided annotation files where they indicate pretty much manually where calls start and stop on the files. The calls vary quite a bit by species. They vary by length, uh, as, as well as some are in the form of rhythmic pulses, other are these are long moans, and in the case of like humpback whales and bowhead whales, you'll hear what you think is singing. Um, what you see below is a waveform plot that was used, that was created using a combination of the library Librosa and Matplotlib. So once we have these files, um, we need to create samples. And there's a Python library called PyDub, which has an audio segmentation function. And you see the um, link to that. And this was used to export segments um, based on the annotation files. So we're reading in the WAV files, we're reading in the annotation files. And we're using data such as shown in this table from the annotation files in order to pick out the um, segments on the source wave files where we expect to hear whale calls. And what you see here is from a blue whale. This is just six records out of a much longer file. 
And as you can see with the blue whale, their calls tend to be quite long. For example, the first one is um, nearly 20 seconds in length. So one key point of working with this is that the files themselves are the observations for training and testing. Uh, so how you name the files is very important. So splitwave.py, which I wrote, uh, names them using the following convention. The center part is the original annotation file name, wave file name, file1.a. To that on the right, I've added the time interval from the 95th to the 114th as, a, as an second as an identifier. To the left, I've added the species mysticine blue as for blue whale. And very important there in the middle is the zero, which is the class label assigned to blue whales. So the six species in this particular data set have been assigned um, class label zero through five. And these are later used in the neural network model in the one hot coding procedure and, and, and turned into label tensors. So the results of the sampling process are shown here. As you can see, this is the summary that comes out of splitwave.py. There are 185 input files for these six species. From this, they were chopped up into more, more than 6,700 wave files and put in a sample file, data file. And you can see the breakdown by the species. After that, we created a subsample using targeted sampling without replacement, where we drew 50 files from each of those species. So now we've gone from 153 megabytes to 72, and now we're down to four. And this is mostly done for purposes of this tutorial, but it's also um, kind of good practice to have a balanced sample of the same number of observations per species. Um, as you can see in, in the table, toward the top, the original files out to sample is quite unbalanced. We have many more finback observations and humpback observations than we do, say for example, minke whale or bride's whale observations. Also, getting down to a smaller number of observations makes the estimation go a lot faster, um, which is important when you're initially going through the model development process. So the next thing you need to think about is feature extraction. Labrosa, and you see the website there, and I invite you to visit their site, has an extensive set of functions for transforming audio waveform files into spectral components. So they take the analog waves and they turn them into digital waves using fast Fourier transform methods. And from this you can uh, develop various measures that represent things that we may commonly know in music as harmony, beat, timber, melody, as well as power, decibels. So below what you see is a, sp a spectrogram, one for a finback, one for a humpback whale. I believe this is a melody spectrogram. And then the, on this page, what you see is a log power spectrogram. And you can see quite a difference between these two animals. Uh, these measurements are used can be used as features in the neural network model. Now, you, if you were to use a convolutional neural network model, you would use them directly as an image because convolutional neural networks are great for processing what looks like a picture. For a, a regular neural network, you can't really use it as an image directly, so what is typically used is mean values for different measurements. This has its advantages, however, um, one advantage is that you can uh, consider many different mean values. Uh, this is a sort of a summary of the network classifier here. So it, it has, um, it's based on a TensorFlow template, which I found in a blog by Akib Salid, which focused on urban sound classification. Uh, it makes extensive use of Labrosa functions for feature extraction and matplotlib for plotting. Uh, in tuning this up, I wound up using 280 neurons in the first hidden layer and 310 neurons in the second. It also trains and predicts 
using five spectral measurements. And you can see them listed there. The first one are some coefficients. Um, the next one is a chromograph. Then there's a Mel spectrograph, which is melody. There's contrast spectrographs and graph and the tonnets measurement, which has to do with harmony. Interestingly, this is somewhat of an advantage with the regular neural network compared with the convolutional model. With the convolutional model, you would have to develop separate pictures for each of these types of measurements, and it's difficult to use more than one type of image when training a model with a convolutional neural network. You would have to come up with a somewhat hybrid, sophisticated structure. So in terms of performance, this uh, neural network performs pretty well. It routinely achieves 90 to 97 percent accuracy on randomly sampled training and test sets. And as you can see in the confusion matrix, it does pretty well on this small sample <clears throat> with 70 percent used for training and 30 percent used for uh, testing. There should be 90 in that matrix and it gets most of them right. All right. Since we have some time, let's take a look at the IPython notebook itself and see what, how that works. Okay, so here it is. <clears throat> um, as I mentioned, it uses the Librosa library for both feature extraction and displays along with matplotlib. And here we set the parameters. Uh, one of the things we need to check with this is um, whether the images will render on our screen. The initial settings that I that came with this did not work, and I had to figure out how to uh, extract the default images. Another thing this did does is it considers whether the operating system platform is either Windows or Unix. I have tested it, and it now works on both. Uh, this is only important because of the way uh, the algorithm splits um, wave file, sample file paths using, using either forward or backward slashes. All right, the next set of section uh, defines the functions that are used for plotting. There's a, one that loads sounds, there's one that plots the waveform files, one that plots spectrograms, and as well as log power spectrograms, and it's a combination of Librosa um, functions as well as matplotlib. Matplotlib actually does have its, its own spectrogram plotting capabilities. Uh, we create a dictionary for label definition, so that links the file names to the species names. And <clears throat> we create a project directory this particular one is, is going to use the sample data 2 folder, which is the subsample of 350 for each species. And we choose um, one random file from each species and plot them just to see what they look like. And that happens in this next section. As you can see, they, we have wave plots for different species. Quite interesting. Some are quite long, 35 more than. 40 seconds for that one, spectrograms, and log power spectrograms. So you can see there are quite a bit of differences between the species. Um, the next section extracts features and labels. We have to uh, first ex parse the audio files, then extract the features, the five that I mentioned, and then labels, we use the one-hot encoding method, which is keyed on that particular numa class number that was um, added to the wave files. Okay, after all that, we um, create the what should be now familiar TensorFlow um, variables and placeholders, and we choose our sample. Um, set the hyperparameters, the variables for the hidden layers and the output layer. We use a cross entropy function with gradient descent and we set up prediction accuracy. 
here are the results. So you can see it achieves quite good accuracy quickly. And in this particular one, which is different than before, you see the confusion matrix. We got up to 96% accuracy, and that's quite good. Here's a plot that summarizes. So this one's a little bit different than what I showed in the PowerPoint file. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Hope you enjoyed it.